Oh, um, hi guys. I know this is the last day of the month, and everyone's really busy pushing um, to finish this, to finish strong. And so I am gonna. I promise that I'm not gonna take up um, too much of your time tonight. But I'm really, really excited and so honored to have my friend Michelle Carpenter on here tonight. Um, I have just kind of started getting to know Michelle um, and uh, just got to kind of and watch her through um, uh, the IP group that we're in and then I actually got to meet her at conference and she's just got one of the best personalities and I think she um, I talked to her some more today to hear some more about her story and I just think it's night. Um, and so I will just kind of turn this over to you, right? kind of telling us your story a little bit, um, how you got started, and we will go from there. Hey, sorry, I had myself muted. It's like a lot of interference. Are y'all hearing this? Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and start. So um, this is my first Zoom call that's not been with my own team. So I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but just a little bit about me. Um, I joined the business in, um, can you still hear me? Okay, cool. I had to mute it. It's there's a interference and I get all ADD and everything. So, um, okay. So I joined the business in April of 2013, and to be perfectly honest, I joined the business thinking that it was a complete scam. Um, I had a friend of mine who I trusted a lot, and she told me that she was making really great money with the business, um, and she was going to quit her job and I respected her a lot. And so I was like, okay. And I signed up as a distributor without even having seen a rep in person. Um, the $10,000 bonus really spoke to me and I needed that money. Uh, so I got to work and I decided that the $10,000 bonus was probably an incentive that nobody actually ever earned. Um, I assumed that it was kind of like a carrot dangling out in front of you that nobody really ever got. And so I decided I was going to work as hard as I possibly could to try and earn that bonus um, to prove that it was a scam. I had the worst attitude, so guys don't have an attitude like mine. Um, it is 100% real, and I found this out because I actually earned <laughs> the $10,000 bonus. Um, I worked really, really hard to prove that it didn't work, and in doing so, I proved that it did work. Um, so I went diamond in August of 2013. I was super excited. I felt like, Okay, I've made it. Um, Diamond was my ultimate goal. That was the top goal that I have. I know a lot of people will join and they're just looking for Ruby or they're wanting to be all the way at the top at Ambassador and that wasn't me. I wanted to be a Diamond that was going to double our family's income. So <laughs> I decided that that's what I was going to go for. And guess what? The very next month in um, September of 2013, I did not requalify for Diamond. I actually lost my good bonus. Um, and I, I was devastated. Um, I, I told my upline, I was like, oh, it's okay that I, I lost it because I'll just um, requalify for it or you know earn it back when I get Diamond again. And she says, that's not how it works. You lost it, it's gone. Um, and so I, I knew that it wasn't a scam because I had achieved something even though I lost it. And I thought, you know, I can, even though I lost it, I've seen it can be done. So I'll just get back to work. Um, but you know, I don't know how new any of y'all are, but in 2013, in September of 2013, to be specific, September 1st, 
uh, we switched over to the new system, the new website that we have now. And in doing so, um, a lot of our loyal customer credit cards and things like that didn't um, transfer over and they all declined. And so that's why volume just tanked that month. And it, my volume just kept going down and down and down. And by the time it was uh, January of 2014 um, and I was going to conference, my entire team had quit. I literally had one girl. Uh, she was my Ruby that went diamond with me. Yeah, my Ruby on my diamond chart. She was the only one left. Just her. No one underneath her. No one on any of my other legs. My entire emerald fell apart. All my top lines were gone. Me and one girl went to conference. And I decided when I was there, I was like, you, and I was only making about 300 bucks, <laughs> 300 bucks as a lifetime diamond. And I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Um, my husband looked at me and he said, okay, I'm not going to reenlist. He was in the military. He says, I'm not going to reenlist. Uh, we're just going to do it works only. And so I freaked out. Um, and I thought I, I need to be double diamond at least for him to be able to get out of the military. And we had about 18 months, uh, before his enlistment was up and he could separate from the military. And I thought, what if I can't even get double diamond in the next 18 months? I was so scared. Um, but I got to work and I found some people that did want to work with me. And uh, so that was mid January. Um, on the 30th of April, I went double diamond. It was a lot of work. <laughs> I got a lot of people telling me no. Um, a lot of people that didn't believe in me. Um, but it was okay. And, and honestly, that time went really fast. It went really, really fast. Um, it happened and on, and then, okay. So that was in 2014. This last year in 2015, I went triple diamond in July and I'm about to go presidential next month. I'll be presidential. So Jen, you want to give me some direction on where you want me to go next? Yeah. Sorry, I have it muted because Reagan's got some serious gas over here and I'm trying to get off in the That would give some comic relief. Yes. Um, so I love, I just love so much that I've gotten to meet you because our paths are, like our timelines are so similar. You got to Diamond way before I did, um, but I love how um, transparent you are and how honest you are with us about how like, yeah, you got it and then some things crumbled. And I think we hear a lot that like, oh, um, you know, I made it to Ruby and now my whole team quit. And so, you know, I don't know where to go from here or, um, or the same thing, you know, like I made it to Diamond and now nobody wants to do this with me. And what kind of leader does that make me? And I just love that you totally didn't let that stop you, that you just knew that you had places to go in this business and that um, the people that quit on you or the people that told you no were not going to be an excuse for you? Well, I mean, I'm a very introverted person. Um, I don't like, like I was telling you earlier, you'll probably never catch me on stage <laughs> at conference or um, it's killing me because I know that one day I'm going to have to do a one team, one mission or something. And that, that scares me. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't take no very well. You know what? My husband's listening in the other room and I can hear my playback. Jonathan, turn the volume down. Sorry. I told you I'm like ADD. <laughs> I hear my voice in the other room. Um, okay. Focus. Jen, what was I saying? Oh, okay. Um, nervous. I don't like getting no's. They freak me out. Um, I hate it when a team member quits because honestly, I see the vision and I know that they've got it inside of them if they just don't give up. But honestly, I think a very big lesson that a lot of us have to learn is that we cannot be a responsible and B we can't force people to do what we want them to do. We can't be responsible for the choices they make. And honestly, the choices that they're making, whether it be to quit or whether they're ignoring you, it has nothing to do with you. It's not that you said the wrong thing. It's not that 
you aren't a good leader or you didn't train them properly. It's because they don't get it. They are not working hard. They don't want to work hard. Maybe they thought this was going to be easier. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with you. I have people ask me all the time, how can I convince this person not to quit or how can I convince them to join my team? And you can't. All you can do is be open and, and show them another way. And if they want to join you, they will. But you can't force them. So you had, um, you had some really good tips on how you focus on building relationships. Because when you went diamond, I feel like you went pretty quickly in that four months. And then when, like when you got back from conference and went double diamond really quickly, um, and so can you talk to us about what you did? I know you mentioned um, that you just took the opportunity to get involved, to make yourself, um, to get in front of people, not on a stage level, but just to get face-to-face -face with people at functions, um, on a park bench, like anything that you could. Um, yeah, to be perfectly honest, I don't do a ton of parties. It freaks me out to stand in front of a room of people. If I do do a party, I'm literally sitting around the kitchen table with them and, you know, sliding them samples of stuff um, because I don't want to stand up and do a presentation. That makes me nervous. Um, the way that I work my business is I, um, okay, so I was telling you guys that I'm super nervous and super introverted. It freaked me out to even wear an It Works t-shirt. I see a lot of y'all are wearing It Works t-shirts right now. I'm wearing one. Um, it used to scare me to death to wear an It Works t-shirt. Um, I felt like people would be judging me, like, you know, not wanting to talk to me because they're thinking that I'm just going to try and sell them something. Um, and that's not what I was about. So um, after my first conference, I made myself a promise. I, I said, okay, I'm going to vow to myself that I'm only going to wear an It Works t-shirt that's the only clothes I'm allowed to wear, um, whether it be to Bible study. The only time, obviously, that I didn't wear one was like to church. Um, but then I came home and put one on immediately, and I would carry my It Works purse <laughs> into church with me. Um, and it was so scary. It was so, so scary because I, <sighs> I had actual like heart palpitations standing in front of my dresser, picking out a shirt to wear, you know, before I was going to go meet with my friends. And I had to force myself to put on a networks t-shirt. And honestly, it was scary for about the first two weeks. And now I feel weird if I'm not wearing a networks t-shirt. So you've got to do the things that scare you. Um, but moving into answering your question. Um, so every one of us should have a target market. Um, and you've got to think about it. Who is your, and I'm, I'm using a sales term, but what I mean is who is your next rock star? Like when we're little girls, we, we picture like who's the guy we're going to marry and who would be like the perfect guy for us. You need to visualize your rock star. What's she going to be like? Or he, they're great male rock stars right now. Um, what are they like? You know, what are their personality traits? What do they like to do? Where do they like to go? Um, for me, my rock stars and the people that I relate best with were other military wives just like me um, who were living pay pay paycheck to paycheck and who always had, you know, negative money three days after payday um, and <laughs> whose husbands were gone all the time and they wanted to make more money and maybe help him get out of the military. Uh, people with kids that were my kids' age because I wanted to be friends with them and be kind of at the same stage of life. Um, so I was looking for myself and you've got to think, where's your rock star? Where is she right now? Anytime you're doing something, what would your rock star be doing that you're, you're waiting for her or, you know, where is she in the day? So like at 4 PM on a Tuesday, where would she be? For me, the answer was, okay, she's probably at the base, um, playground, you know, with her kids. So I would go out and I would sit on the bench at the playground. I usually there was another woman there. And um a lot of us, I don't I don't know if you guys are guilty of this. Um I know I was before this business. If there was someone sitting on a bench, um and there were two benches, I would go pick the one where no one was sitting and sit all by myself on the bench. Um you're not going to meet people if you're not 
interacting with people. So for me, I work best one on one talking to someone and just making a friend. Um, so I would go to the park and I would sit down right next to another, you know, this other lady, and I would leave my phone in my purse and I would just, you know, maybe watch my kids play. And sooner or later, she's probably on her phone. Um, sooner or later, one of her little ones is going to come running up and need something. And I would just say, Oh my gosh, your little boy is so cute. You know, how old is he? And she'll tell me, oh, he's six. And I'll say, oh, my son's seven. Oh, does he go to the school over here? Yeah, he does. And so I'll just get talking with her. Um, I'm not trying to be sneaky. I'm not trying to worm my way into her life or anything. I'm honestly trying to make a new friend. Uh, my ultimate goal, like the best thing that could possibly happen is not me handing her my Blitz card. Um, it's me adding her onto my Facebook. If I hand her my Blitz card, she's gonna leave it somewhere. Um, it's going to get left in her car and she's going to see it every day for like three weeks. And then she's going to clean out her car at the gas station. It's going to get thrown away or it's going to get lost in the bottom of her purse. Um, or she's just going to, you know, she's going to forget. Um, it's going to sit on her counter and then the mail is going to stack on top of it. But if I can get her to add me on Facebook, she's going to see my posts every single day. So that is my ultimate goal is to add her on my Facebook. So what I was telling Jen earlier is, um, and honestly, everybody has their phone in their hand all the time. I don't know if you guys know this trick or not. Um, but as I'm sitting talking to her, usually I'll say, you know, and I'm, I'm just letting conversation flow naturally. I'll say something like, you know, our kids played so well together. You know, how did you, are, you know, where, obviously military, where have you been stationed? How long have you been here? Um, is your husband deployed? You know, things like this. And, you know, do you have lots of friends already? And she'll say, no, I don't have a group of friends because most women don't have a group of friends these days. I'll say, oh my gosh, really here, add me on Facebook and we can do this again next Tuesday or something. And that's, that's it. That's done. Um, and so often people use this business as a way to gain friends as well. Um, and back to the t-shirt. The only time I will ever talk about my business to someone is if they talk about it with me first. Usually they'll see my t-shirt and they'll say, what works? Because all my shirts say, it works. They go, what works? And I'll hand them my card and I'll say, well, it's easier to show you. This is what, this is what works right here. And then you have to stop talking. So many of us, we undo what we've already done by just word vomiting all over people will say, oh my gosh, it's this wrap you can get four. Okay. So it's, it tightens, tones and firms in 45 minutes. And then you can, but you need four of them to really see a result, but you've got to have half your body weight in water. Um, and then it's progressive results, results over 72 hours. So you can get a box of four for $99 or you know what you could join me. Oh my gosh, we could make so much money together. Do you have, okay, so we got this thing called Steps to Success and we just tell them everything. And do you know what? They did not hear a word. They did not hear a word because y'all know what it's like when you go to the mall and there's those kiosks in the middle of the mall and they want you to come over and like sample their sea salt or whatever or their cell phone or their hair straightener and they're like hey hey your pretty hair and you're just like oh god i gotta keep walking just keep walking tunnel vision or you take out your phone and you're like oh i'm texting or oh hello who's there um that is what they do when we start word vomiting all over them they stop listening and they can't compute what you're saying oh. Hang on, sorry. I don't have my... Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> that was on my computer. Um, anyway, but if you show them a picture and they say what works and you say this does and then you stop, it gives their eyes a second to read and look at the picture. And then usually they just go, does it really work? And you say yes. Tell us, okay, so this I love. Tell us what you do after you hand someone your Blitz card. When you oh. ask for it back. Um, yeah, so I will hand people my card and they're looking at it and um, I'll put my hand out <laughs> to take it back. Um, I don't have a lot of money to just be spending on giving away my coupons. Um, so if they don't really want it, I take it back. Um, I'll usually say, oh, here, let me, 
you know, I'll just take that back. Um, there's a coupon on here if you want it, but if you don't want it, I'll just put that back in my purse. Um, and usually they're like, oh no, I want it. Um, and once they have said that, they've committed in their mind that this is a valuable piece of information and they're much more likely to hang on to it. I love that. I love that because just like you said, like the same way, like if you're talking to someone, whether it's via text or in person, like making them ask the questions just gets them so much more invested in whatever you have for them, whether it's the products or the business, um, the more they are forced to engage, then the more likely they are at some point. To well, then you're just having a nice conversation with somebody. You're not giving them a sales pitch and shoving information down their throat. Nobody wants that. Yes. I love answer, that. answer the question they asked and give no more information than that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, let me look at my notes from what I took from earlier. Um, I you took notes because I did not. <laughs> I did. You had so much good stuff and you've covered a lot of it already. Um, just being a friend. You said something earlier today that I have that I heard someone else say um, months ago that I carried with me. And you said that no matter what, if you can just make them smile, then you've done your job. And I heard someone say months ago, um, like I don't talk to what they say. They said I don't talk to people trying to, um, I think it was Sarah Rankin actually, who said, I don't blitz people to try and get them to join my team. I just compliment them and offer them my coupon because if I'm giving them a compliment or um, you know, paying for their meal and drive through or whatever I can do just to make their day better, then that makes my day better. I agree so much. I love that you said that earlier. Like just if you can just make a friend and make them smile, then done your job well and honestly my okay so my mom struggles with this um she feels like this business is about making money off of people like i'm signing up loyal customers so that i can make money off of them and if you have that mindset if you feel like we're using people that's awful I mean, that's a horrible um, feeling to feel like you're using people. Mm -hmm. um, this business saved my life. It saved my family. Um, my husband got out of the military in, I think November, October 1st was his last day in the military. And now we live, you know, back home in Texas with our families and my kids get to go to private school. We got to go to Disney World. Um, we get to have family time together. My husband's never has to deploy anymore. Um, this business is like giving someone a lottery ticket. When you hand that card out, you are offering them a million dollars. You can't, if they don't want it, if you were handing someone a million dollars and they didn't want it, would that hurt your feelings? Or would you just be like, okay, well, I guess I'll just bless somebody else with this. That's how you've got to look at it. And if you can just love on people and make them smile and be kind, good, kind, amazing things are going to come back to you. So that's how I look at this business. I love that so much. Um, the last thing that I took notes on, you know, I talked to you about this because couple weeks ago, it seemed like we just had a big wave of um, maybe what we thought were key players on our team who quit. And you have a couple of really good analogies that you use about roses and hair. If you can kind of um, voice that again, just so our team can understand. Oh, if my team were on here, they would be laughing so hard because all I do is ever, I only ever speak in analogies. I and you and I really love it a lot. <laughs> Um, okay. So in, okay. In April, I'll have been in this business for three years. So I'm not quite there yet. I'm what, two years and three quarter, two and three quarter of a of years. Um, and I've had about 200 team members quit. 
um, in not quite three years of this business. Um, and I was telling Jen earlier, and I'm not saying this to brag on myself because this is not my number, but my team killed it this month. And at last count, we had signed up like 96 team members just this month. Um, we, and, and I mean, this is from the girl whose entire team quit, you know, a few years ago. When you are gardening, part of gardening, we call it pruning the roses. You've got to go out there and you've got to cut that bush and you've got to take all the dead parts off of it so that the live parts, the parts that um, are the best parts can flourish. Um, and I told Jen, it's the same idea with your hair. You know, for those of us that aren't gardeners, um, our hairstylists tell us you need to get a trim like every two months or whatever. And we do that so your hair can be healthy and grow longer and grow more. Um, a few years back, I was trying to grow up my hair and uh, my stylist, she says, you need to come back in eight weeks for a trim. And I'm like, every time you keep trimming it and it's not getting any longer. And she's like, well, you've got to cut the ends if you want it to be healthy. And I'm like, I think you just want my money, but it's true. You know, you've got to cut the dead parts off to keep the rest of it healthy. So if you've got people that are leaving, it's okay. It has nothing to do. You didn't do a bad job. You, it's not that you're not doing something right. It has nothing to do. Their decision has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. And so I, I said that earlier, but just let them go. They're making room, you know, for the roses to get more beautiful. Thank you. That's, yeah. It just helps to put that into perspective that you're not, your business isn't ending, that you're not failing at this. I just, you know, it's God's way of cleaning it out so that you have the room to grow. I love that so much. Um, if you, we can, we can start to wrap this up. And then I didn't actually ask you this earlier, but just to put you on the spot, if you just have like one thing that you hold at the top of your business, like one thing, you know, is it like the, the best just tip that you can, that you can give oh. simply for our businesses. Anytime someone asks me for a tip, I can't give you just one. Like you guys could tell earlier, I get nervous and I talk a lot. So consistency is number one. You can't just take a week or a month away from your business and expect it to have keep growing or even be maintained. Um, if you were to open a boutique, um, selling clothes, you would need to be there during the store hours every single day. If you want your customers to show up, um, if you're open, you know, Monday and your hours say eight to five, but then you're like, you know, I just really want to go do this other thing right now. And you close the shop doors, your customers are going to come by and try and come in and your shop's closed. Do you think they're going to come by again later? No, they're going to go somewhere that is reliable. So make sure you're being consistent. People need to see, and on social media is so important. <sighs> These days, you know, the joke, like, okay, if you don't, if you don't take a selfie, like it didn't happen, you know, you can't go to someone's house and wrap them and then just go home and be like, worked my business today. Yeah, you went and wrapped somebody, but you know what? You got to put it on Facebook or it didn't happen. Your customers and your potential distributors, whether they sign up this month or two years from now, I'm just now signing distributors that I was talking to two years ago. Um, but they need to see you being consistent with this business. They need to see you taking it seriously. Um, so you can take a selfie in the car with your $25. Um, if your customer will allow you to take a selfie of yourself while you're like wrapping their belly, like that would be amazing. Here's me wrapping my friend, you know, we're having a great old time. Um, but you've got to share it. You have to share it. If you, you know, sold a wrap at the gas station, you have to post it about it on Facebook. Otherwise it didn't happen. So consistency, so important. And you have to work your business every day. Um, even if, if you don't work through Facebook, um, make sure that you are working 
everyday blitzing at least, but it has to be every day. So consistency and excitement. If you're not excited about your business, why do you think anybody would want to join you? Um, if you are talking to someone, maybe you're, um, I love Chick-fil-A. So if you're a Chick-fil-A and you are sitting next to somebody and you've got your It Works t-shirt on and she looks at you and goes, does that really work? And you're like, yep. And you go back to doing what you're doing and completely ignoring her. She's going to be like, oh, okay, well, all right. But if you're warm and inviting and you go, yeah, I really, yeah, it really works and I love it. That's warm and inviting and exciting. And yeah, yeah, it really does. You know what? Do you want to see my pictures? My, my pictures are of my butt. So it's kind of funny. So I'm like, you want to see my butt, <laughs> you know, and they laugh and I'm like, I swear I'm in a bit, I'm in a bit, a bathing suit. So it's not like weird, you know, and I, I laugh at myself and I make myself the butt of the joke, but I have good energy. So be excited when you're posting on Facebook. If you're like, Ugh, I'm having the worst day ever. And you post that on Facebook and then an hour later, you're like, anybody want to rap? You know, they're going to be like, mm, you've got to be excited. So stay positive and excited. Um, last thing, guys, I'm going to leave you with, um, when I first started this business, um, like I said, I was desperate for the $10,000 bonus. Um, I messaged every single top earner that I knew about. Everybody that was presidential, everybody that was ambassador, the ones that were famous. We have new famous people these days, but back in 2013, the famous ones and messaged them all and said, Hey, what was your secret? What's your secret with this business? Um, I was really bold. Um, and nine out of 10 of them came back and said steps to success. And I was like, shoot me in the face. That is so stupid. My upline says that too. Um, I was looking for something like groundbreaking, you know, something fantastic. And they all just had steps to success. Now I'm here and I'm going to tell you it's the steps to success. Don't make it exciting. You don't need binders full of information. You don't need, um, to watch YouTube videos for three hours a day. Um, that's not making you money. I mean, it's great to watch a YouTube video. It's fabulous to plug into calls, but they're not making you a single penny unless you go out and do something. Speak to someone. You've got to do that in order to complete the steps to success. It's just that simple. So steps to success, consistency, and excitement. Thank you so much. I... Like, I have to tell you, on a personal level, it's so, it's been so nice, like, getting to talk to you, and it's so, um, it just, like, reignites my fire and just reaffirms why I'm here to, like, hear the same things that I already know in my heart. Like, um, I can't tell you, like, I had, like, the little butterflies when you said that when you signed up, you messaged all of the presidential and ambassadors that you knew. One of the, um... My ambassador upline, who wasn't it, she was like a double or triple diamond at the time, um, gave us a challenge and she said to friend five presidential or ambassador diamonds uh, on Facebook and, and just watch them. And I went ahead and messaged them um, and said like, hey, I'm not, you know, I know I'm not on your team, but I just want to like thank you for being an example for me because I'm going to be watching you. And yeah, every single one of them came back with, the same things that you just said. Be consistent, stay excited, and just follow your steps to success. And um, it took a while for the steps to success to click with me because I just thought, well, I'll just keep enrolling people and keep enrolling people. But then, like, it wasn't until recently even, like, that's kind of embarrassing to say, but it wasn't until recently when I realized, like, and here's why. It's because I had a baby and all my numbers dropped. Like I wasn't enrolling people. I wasn't working my business the same way. And that's okay because that's why we do a business like this, you know, to take the time with our family. Um, but I had to get back in it. And I, as I've been getting back into it um, and like, like kind of getting my mojo back and getting my, my love for this back, um, it just clicked. Like, I sign up a distributor and I teach them how to get four customers. And then I start teaching them how to find just three distributors. And then we're gonna teach them how to find four customers. And we're gonna teach them how to get just three distributors. 
and then we're going to teach them how to get four customers. And we just repeat it over and over and over again, and it seriously is as simple as that. It is. So anyway, that just, like, you just made my night with all of that. Um, I can't thank you enough for sharing your time at the end of the month with us. And uh, you guys, Michelle, too, I kind of sprung something on her because I mistakenly did not tell her that this was a Zoom. She thought she was coming on, a, like, a team, like, phone call. So um, we're all in our sweats and with our babies or in bed or whatever. And just thank you so much for flying by the seat of your pants and volunteering your time to do this with us tonight. Oh, absolutely. It was my pleasure. Um, I want to share one more thing before we go. Um, guys, it doesn't matter who's – I think a lot of people um, – I, and I'm sorry, this just popped into my head because the call that came in um, was actually one of my distributors. But um, as we're talking about steps to success and you enroll your three distributors and you want to teach them to do the steps to success, it doesn't mean that you stop doing yours. Um, you need to be completing your steps to success every month. I complete mine, or at least I try to complete mine every single month. You can't just sign up a bunch of distributors and then be like, that's all I got to do, you know, and sit back and drink lemonade and make money off of them. There's a difference between a leader and a boss and nobody joined this business hoping for a, another boss that's going to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. They want you to show them to lead by example. So you can expect the people in your downline to do what you're not willing to do yourself. So make sure that you are out there, you're talking to people, you're completing your steps to success and your team will follow you. That's perfect. I think that's what's so different about this business, and I think that's what really makes us a team business, is because we're still doing the exact same things that we are teaching. That was, that's really good. Thank so, thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. Yes, and I'm excited to hit presidential with you next time. I'm super, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. We'll see. All right. We'll see what Goodbye. happens. It's it's yours for the taking. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.